My name is Dr. Gary Rose. I am wife to my business partner, LaShawn Curb. We founded, of course, we live in sunny Orlando, Florida because it's our destination of choice. Everybody comes here for vacation. We get to live here. Um, mother of two kids, stepmother to um, an amazing daughter who I got a lucky extra. And um, yeah, just living a life on my terms every day I wake up. sat me down uh, gosh I think it was over a year ago now and she said mom when I graduate I want to travel the world and I was like that's great honey go ahead if you are being bullied that is coming from an outside source which you are not responsible for what you are responsible for is how you are handling you while this is going on so if you have found a way that is super powerful for other children to handle themselves um, or teenagers, sorry, to handle themselves so that they are not impacted and you feel really strongly about this, then I would say it's your duty to share it. My name is Abhi Arya, father of two girls, six dogs, husband to a superwoman, a street car racer turned hotelier, now social media marketer and founder of Internet Bogus. So Dr. Carey, what would be your hero introduction to the world? Well, if I'm going to put it like that, hey, uh, my name is Dr. Carrie Rose. I am wife to my business partner, LaShawn Curb. We founded, of course, we live in sunny Orlando, Florida, because it's our destination of choice. Everybody comes here for vacation. We get to live here. Um, mother of two kids, stepmother to um, an amazing daughter who I got a lucky extra. And um, yeah, just living a life on my terms every day I wake up. Um, blessed. That is amazing. That's amazing. So um, your online course is very popular. Thank you. <laughs> so so how, how to all the people who are watching and wanting to earn an income from home to be able to spend more time with their families, uh, they're thinking if I can have an online course, if only I could monetize my own education, my own uh, knowledge into a course and you know, be able to spend time at home and market it there. Is it as easy? Can anybody do it? Or you have to be an expert to be able to have a course? You can make a course on anything that you want, as long as you are just slightly ahead of the person that wants to learn from you. Right. I wouldn't recommend, recommend slightly ahead on all things. Like if you're a business coach, you want to have some success in business before you're teaching it to others, not just you made $5,000 last month. Yay. You know, right. but there's levels to this, but let's say you have knowledge of tomato canning, or you have knowledge of quilting, or you have knowledge of making soap, or you have knowledge of how to start an Amazon business for teens. You know, like if you have knowledge of how to do the thing, you can package it in any way. And often what actually stops people is not their level of expertise. We all know something. We all know something that we can offer. It's usually um, the, the space in between your ears. It's right. that, that head game of whether or not you're good enough that actually is going to stop you before your real qualifications. So there's, there's nothing in this world that you can't learn, that you can't apply, that you can't grow yourself and that you can't offer to somebody else. Um, I've seen all sorts of courses. I've worked on all sorts of types of courses. Right now, I'm working on a course that's helping funeral directors navigate all of the COVID situation. I work with a church that gets their message out through online course materials that they're like, you know, guiding people through scripture. I work with all sorts of people in all sorts of backgrounds. And so I'm just saying that like, those would be things that you wouldn't necessarily think of. And it's funny because I've been saying, if you were a funeral director, you could create a course for some time now because I've known that business because of my grandparents having had a funeral home, but it was literally, you could do it on anything you want. Um, if it's something that somebody else is going to buy. So it's, it's two things, right? It's figuring out if somebody's going to buy it and it's just getting over the I'm not enough story, which by the way, everybody has on some level or another or has worked through to get rid of it on some level or another. So if you're having that conversation with yourself of I'm not enough or who am I to do this or I'm not good enough or whatever it is, they won't like it. It shows up all over the place. Don't worry. You're not alone. All you have to do is just push past the story you have in your head. Lovely. I like that. Raya? Thanks. <laughs> so um, to launch any new venture like we are with Internet Mogul of the World, do you think it's better to create um, like a new course or a series of 
uh, online free webinars. Um, and if you're answering a course, which obviously, how is it best to launch a course? Honestly, I don't think that there's one best or another. It's um, the, the decision is what works best for you. Okay, so there's three factors that we're always looking at on how we're going to set up any online program. Okay, and so the three factors that I look at is the creator, the content, and the audience. So when you're examining those three pieces, is it best for you to do it the way you're looking at? If it's not best for you to do the, the way you're looking at, look somewhere else. <laughs> That's not going to work for a business model long run, right? If it doesn't fit the content, don't do it that way. How else could it fit the content? And if it doesn't fit or serve your audience, then that's going to equal zero purchases. So you don't want to go down that path either. So you really have to look at all three. Um, I look at webinars more as a tool for selling than I do as a means for um, education or, or the piece that you're selling itself. So it depends on how that's done. I mean, some people have done master classes, which they do sell, which are more of an education opportunity as opposed to an enrollment conversation. Right. But most of the webinars that you're on are gonna be more of those enrollment conversations. Got it. Awesome. Perfect. Right, next. Okay. So our definition of an internet mogul, uh, because our book is Internet Mogul of the World, uh, is someone who can leverage the internet, but also be able to spend time with their family. Um, what is your definition as Dr. Carrie Rose? What is your definition of an internet mogul? Well, gosh, guys, I feel just honored to even be on this with you. And I heard internet mogul. I'm like, I don't know if I qualify. Let's see. But when you, when you talk about it the way that you do, what you're really talking about is someone who has claimed their freedom for their self, despite whatever story they've been told. Nice. And my daughter sat me down, uh, gosh, I think it was over a year ago now. And she said, mom, when I graduate, I want to travel the world. And I was like, that's great, honey, go ahead. You know, like she's going on 13 now. I'm like, all right, fine. You've got a few years, but when you're ready, go, you know? And I showed her some different options of how she could do it. And she was like, well, actually first she said, dad says, I can't do this. My, my ex and I are divorced. This is her father. Um, dad says, I can't do this until I've worked very, very hard for many years and I've saved up enough money and I've retired and then I can see the world. She said, but I think you know another way. And I said, I'm so glad you're so observant and you're already into figuring that out for yourself because if you wait, you don't know what happens at the point of retirement, right? You just don't know. Like every day is a blessing. Every day is a gift. You don't know if you're going to get there for one. For another, you don't know what situation you're going to have when you get there or what, you know, if you're working for somebody else, you're always at their um decision on whether or not you're going to have enough to get to that place, right? And so we end up making really limited choices based on other people's ideas for us. And that is a, a box. I, I call it the box life. I don't want to live in a box. I don't want to drive a little box to go to a box, to sit in a box, to eat out of a box, you know, to die in a box. Like none of those things work for me and none of those things work for my family. And so when she came to me and said, I think you know another way, it was one of the most powerful moments that we had because I was able to show her different ways to, you know, that programs that are already in existence that you can travel the world and work as a freelancer. And they have systems already set up in place for you to like have um, roommates already assigned and have co-working spaces already assigned and having like actual uh, community projects already assigned so you can help the communities and the places you're living in while you're doing all this traveling. And that's just to start it off for somebody that's young and that doesn't have like a really strong, like I'm not traveling the world with her and she would be doing it by herself. So, hey, I'm the mom, I'm gonna be a little, ah, stop yeah. that, don't do all of that, right? Like how can we get you there supported to the point where you just do it and it's not a thing. And I think that when you say internet mogul in the terms that you're using, I'm defining it as personal freedom. I've created my life on my terms. I do what I want, when I want, I accept who I want as a client. Um, I sell my programs and I live how I want to live. And I think that that's something that we are really blessed in today's you know, age that we all have access to this. This right. isn't something that is just meant for, you know, the, the one percent or whatever, the elite population. This is for everybody to have access to that kind of personal power and freedom. 
Um, and it's really a blessing. And thank you for uh, considering me as an example for that. Not at all. Thank you very much. I remember uh, uh, we had met at the Thinkific dinner a couple of years ago. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was such a, a, that's the time I decided if you do a project, I'll reach out to you. And uh, ah. So we, 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 like I said, I grew a, we uh, grew a company from four to 200 people and in the last 10 years and uh, nice. we did pretty well. But uh, this Corona just almost wiped off most of it um, oh, no. because most of it was uh, doing digital marketing for hotels. But uh, oh. for the last one year between me and my two daughters, we've been working on this project because this agency was making me travel all over the world and keeping me away from the girls. And I said, let's do something where we can stay together. Like I'm mm -hmm. right now in India, I couldn't go back in time. The girls are in Vancouver. So I was like, uh, you know, it's enough of traveling. I want to uh, see the kids grow up and all of that. So let's work on a venture where, and that's when, when the word started getting out and we started getting support from people and we reached out to everybody from Chris Tucker to Greg Smith, to Pat Flynn, to Stu McLaren, to Billy Jean, to Grant Cardone. And everybody said, this is a great venture. We'll support you. So we're like, you know, if everybody's supporting, this is the best time to, you know, for at least, like I said, it started off with me saying, I'm, you know, enough, I need to stay home now. And but to stay home, you need to have a venture which will help people. And I thought, why should I do something else? Why not? If I'm helping myself stay home, I just, let's me, let me make a venture with my kids for all other families to say, you can all stay home or it <laughs> might not be as crazy about, you know, because people go crazy. They spend two to three years in traffic, two to three years of people's lives in traffic. Just because they, have, they say, it's just a mindset. I have to, this is how, you know, somebody has to do it. Mm -hmm. And the other people get neglected. So with, with the internet, with digital marketing, with online courses, with affiliate marketing, with a YouTube channel, you can now work on your own terms and still stay close to the family. So that's, I mean, so that, that's, what, that's where the vision came from. And it's, a, it's an honor when you, when you accepted me, both of us were like, yeah. Oh, yay. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for including me in this. I really love what you're doing. And, you know, I think that a lot of people are, are probably in that position, like, like, well, like you are right now, but you had access to a lot of other tools. So you knew exactly how to pivot, but really kind of awakening to the fact that, you know, you don't want to live your life on somebody else's terms, exactly. you know, and if you're looking at doing any kind of online program or any kind of digital marketing, if you're looking at creating your business around this kind of a model, the first thing you've got to start with is, you know, what kind of life do you want to live? You know, like write out what you want your day, ideal day to look like. The first time I did that activity, it was so painful. I cried because I didn't know that that was even possible for me. I was like, this is my ideal day and it looks absolutely nothing like what I'm living in right now. Cool. And it was painful. And so guys, I'm just telling you like my, it was painful. So if it's painful for you, cool, it's all right. Because that means that you have to pivot in a very major way with a lot of things in order to make your life look like you want it to look. But if you're designing a business, you have a really unique and wonderful opportunity to design it to look however you want. You know, I have it set up on my calendar that you cannot get on my calendar without personally messaging me and me approving before two o'clock in the afternoon. It's just like, before that is my time to run, you know, my business as I see fit, to sleep in if I want to, to hang out. I don't, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I could be working on client stuff, but it's like my personal time. But I designed that as an aspect of it because this is how I want to be, you know? And so, you can have it be however you want and you can create something that looks like the life that you want. And it's amazing how it starts to happen. Once you have a determination in your mind of where you're going, you end up going there. Lovely. I like that. So can you just, uh, <laughs> I, you know, slightly, slightly uh, on a, in a step-by-step -step system for all the mothers, all the fathers, all the kids who are watching this right now and saying, you know what, I want that life too. I want a life on my own terms together. And I like the online course route to be able to reach there. How, how, what would be the step-by-step? -step? Like, how should I come up with an idea? What should I, can you just break it down for us? Sure. The first thing to do is conduct market research. And this is like the, probably the most boring part of building your business, but the most necessary part if you want an online course business. Because a lot of people, when they start to build an online course, they'll go, I have all this stuff I could just like offer. I could just package it and they'll buy it. And the fact is that nobody actually wants to know everything that you know. 
Oh. And even everything that you know about a topic. And when I say it like that, you're like, oh yeah, that's common sense, right? Like I don't want to know everything you know, no offense or anything, but you don't want to know everything I know. And I'm done taking over here, sure. you know, but online course creators tend to start with, I'm going to package everything I know. And what you really want to do, and I'm going to quote my friend, Tim Irway, because it's his phrase and I use it all the time. So props to Tim, but you want to take them from some place in Sucksville to some place in Austin town. So this A to B journey, not A to Z, but where's their pain right now? What's really keeping them up at night? And my friend, John Cook once said them, you know, really we're all in the mattress business. We have the same thing. We're trying to give them a good night's sleep. And so if you look at what you're putting together in your course as something like that, like what you're putting together, would it give them a good night's sleep? You know, what pain points is it really taking away? And is this a match for what they're asking for also? Because we'll put it in our head that, oh, they definitely, they'll definitely be better if we do this for them. Yeah. But if we don't actually see research on it, if we don't actually dive into it, you could end up making something that nobody wants to buy. Um, a lot of people have this backwards. And so most marketers, actually I'd say all successful marketers get this. If it's not out there at all, there's probably not a market for it right. or you're going to be taking some serious risks. <laughs> okay. If you want to be a risk taker, that's cool. Just know that ahead of time. If people aren't already buying something similar to what you're going to be offering, you might take some financial losses. If you know that and you're cool with moving ahead and just testing it, you can do that also. Um, there's a process for market research, which really just involves starting, you can use one of the biggest sources online for purchases right now and going into Amazon and just Googling what you think, or not Googling, searching on Amazon for what you think people are looking to buy or what you're thinking about putting together. And if you look in just their book section alone, you can start going through and reading all of the three-star reviews. And I say three because they've done some research and three is the most honest, you know, five could be a friend of theirs. One could be somebody okay. with a really bad day. Like, but three is like the most honest. They'll tell you where the content holes are and they'll tell you what they like. And by content holes, that means like, Hey, they, I liked this, this, and this, but I was missing this, this, and this, as far as information that I really needed to be successful. And all of that you can get just by reading what they've already written right there. And when you're doing this process, I spend at least three hours on it. And I know that sounds like, oh, yawn, this is the worst, you know, and I, I kind of like, I grew up before the internet. So research for me used to be like a card catalog and encyclopedias, like this is nothing, you know, like this, that was, that was hard. This is easy, but it's the boring part. It's the nitty gritty part. But if you don't nail the market research and you don't hear your customers' voices telling you what they want from you, then the rest of it isn't going to work. Or if it does work, you got lucky, you know, like you really want to be knowing like, who are you talking to? Who is your target demographic? Like, do you actually know who they are? Could you, could you uh, see a picture of them online and go, that's the person? Could you describe them to me? What are their hopes? What are their wants? What are their dreams? And what are their fears? What is that thing that's keeping them up all night? And if you don't have that A to B, sex filled to awesome town journey figured out, then I wouldn't do the course yet. I would spend more time on offer development and figuring out what it is they actually want to purchase before you start packaging. And even then you can test whatever you're doing as a beta course. You don't have to, and I, I run a product development agency, like we build online courses with clients and for clients. And I'm telling you not to do that first. <laughs> like you can do a beta version of this. Okay. You can go out there and test the waters and put up a landing page and see if you can direct traffic to it and see if that would solve somebody's problem and see if you can get the first round of people in there. And once you've got the first round of people, then you can do a drip cycle, like, you know, go ahead and drop like one lesson a week with it or do it as a live coaching program, get their feedback, hear them, see what they're really struggling with on the calls where you can guide them to you know where they're actually going and that's going to give you feedback in real time on how you actually need to create your course so you just really want to spend a good chunk of your time on market validation and getting sales and then we can get into like actually creating a really impactful course you know there's there's definitely things that you can do when it comes to instructional strategies that will cement the learning for them there's things that you can do that will uh, raise your course completion rates. 
um, which is usually where I spend the time. But if you're just getting started, that's not where you're at right now. Where you're at right now is figuring out if this thing is going to help somebody and you can sell it. Got it. Got it. So I like that. So research your client, know who they are, what they want. And if you're still not sure, start with a beta, co beta course and start a landing page, get people there. If they start buying, then do a drip cycle. So mm -hmm. make your course with your customers. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I mean, if you only get one purchase, you can always hit refund. So sorry, we're not going to launch this. <laughs> you know, that's okay. You know, if you, unless you want to do a coaching program of one, but I think that would be enough data for me to know that that's not a course that anybody wants right now. Got you it. know? Got it. So uh, people say that, uh, so now, now comes to the marketing part. So you've got a course ready and you put it on a great system like Thinkific. We talk about Thinkific all the time. Greg Smith, mm -hmm. awesome guy. And you put it Absolutely. on a local management system like uh, Thinkific and you got all the bells and whistles, you know how to, how do you market a course? I mean, I don't have a list. I don't have anybody on my Facebook. How do I market a course? Exactly. So if you don't have a list and you're just getting started, then your focus is getting the list together. Now, a lot of people will go with that, well, shouldn't I have gotten the list together before I decided to create anything? Or shouldn't I have gotten the list together before I decided to go into research? I'd say no, because honestly, there's two camps. There's the blogger camp, and then there's the marketer camp. And the blogger camp will blog and blog and blog, and only 95% of them will ever actually monetize. And the marketer camp will go, okay, I know what they want because they've done my research. I'm ready to sell them on the thing. Now I can start funneling them to that end. Okay. So, I mean, really, if you're looking at it, you just want to do a simple funnel if you don't have a list. Okay. That is one way to do it. But I would say what's been the most successful for us in our business, and I can really speak to this end, and what's been the most impactful as far as our list growth and monetization in our business has been running online summits. So we run an online summit once a year called the Online Course Success Summit, and we've done it for three years. Nice. And we've put 20,000 people through our list through the summit. Um, and then not just, I mean, we have different systems in place. We have different, um, we've done webinars, we've done the PLF for the, um, the video series, right? That's gone out. One of the most successful strategies that we've used is actually the nine word email to the existing list. Um, but but this, the nine word email, are you still interested in X? So for me, are you still interested in building online courses? Question mark. And you send it to the person individually, not mass through your email thing. Okay. And then they, the open rates get higher that way. Um, and then the usual response is yes or no, not at this time. You know, like they, they tell you, but you're having actual conversations and directing them. But to me, the fastest way, if you are going to start from absolutely nothing, is to figure out how to do an online summit, how to gain access to expert speakers in your niche industry that can support you um, through affiliate marketing and sending people to you as well. So making it a win-win-win, right? So is the content a win for their audience? Is it a win on the, you know, the support side as far as affiliate marketing is concerned for the speaker themselves. Is it a right fit? Are there other speakers that are going to add to the list as well that, that if they come in now, those people are going to see that person and that's going to be a win. So setting it up so that everybody wins all around and using that approach, I think is a lot easier actually. Not that summits aren't difficult. They're super tricky, but I still think it's a lot easier than starting from scratch with a funnel and ads. Um, but not that you can't do that too. It's just one of those things that I've found to be a little trickier, but everybody that's inside of ClickFunnels will probably tell you otherwise. So you decide. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that get uh, email uh, people who are known in a relevant industry to the product that you're launching. Then yeah. you don't need to necessarily be marketers and they could be maybe if I'm launching a, uh, something on, uh, you know, heart care, for example, cardio, or, because I'm trying to get away from marketing because whenever we talk about online courses, people are like, oh, but I don't know anything about digital marketing and online course could be about anything else. So say it's mm -hmm. about uh, cardio care or take care of your heart and you've not been well. At the age of 50, somebody had a heart attack and now he wants to take care of other 50 people who are in their 50s and want to build a course for them. 
Now he should get in touch with maybe a cardiovascular surgeon who's very well known or Dr. Sanjay Gupta who comes on TV uh, in the US and talk. So those he gets in touch with uh, famous people and gets them to talk on the summit and they all talk about healthcare. And at the end of the summit, you sell your course and an affiliate uh, incentive goes to everybody on the summit. Is that correct? I'm just breaking it down for the audience to understand. Of course, I understand completely because I can just go on, ooh, here's a funnel or here's a, actually a tunnel and I'll walk in there by myself. The only thing that I would say is that when you're reaching out to get speakers and you're reaching out to, um, to make that first contact, I've, I get like maybe three summit invites a week and most of them I delete. Um, because they're very form letter written and they're not personalized at all. And so I'm like, well, you know, I, I look for personal connections. I look for who, who do I know already? You know, when we invite people to be speakers on our summit, we look at our friends list first. That's like, that's what we're looking at is who are our friends and do they serve the people we serve? And that's the first, you know, the first thing we go to, who do we know, like, and trust and have established relationships with? And so I think those things are really important. And it's hard today sometimes to establish real authentic connection with people because we see so many quick examples of throw your business card at somebody or dropped in on your, on your LinkedIn just to say hi, but really here's a link I want you to check out and it's a pitch to something else. And it doesn't feel as good. And especially if you're a busy speaker and you have a lot on your plate already, um, and you're being highly selective, which a lot of people are, sure. um, you, you, I don't know that everyone goes for that. So like when you reach out in an email, like, Hey, something I really liked about you was I noticed that here, I feel connected to you and I just want to get to know you as a person. And it's really hard to do this when you're just looking for a, something else. You really got to make sure that that is something you really want yeah. and not look at everybody as a, I mean, they may be a potential speaker down the road, but first there's a connection and there's an opportunity. And it's also an opportunity for you to support them. You know, I mean, you can always drop it like, hey, I'm thinking about putting this thing together and I think you might be a good fit for it, but I don't know if you're open to that kind of thing. Is that something you might, that might work for you? You know, and they will say yes or no, but the other side of it is they may say yes to being a speaker and they may not say yes to emailing. Okay, so that's something, you know, that's a differentiator too. Um, not all of our speakers have emailed in the past. I'm still friends with them. But, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's one of those things to know, like if it's not the right fit for their audience or they don't have an audience, you may just be getting good content from them to support pushing it out there. But then you have another product that A, you can sell. It can be free for some time and you can still get it out there in front of people um, and run traffic to the summit that you're doing. So there's lots of ways to approach this. Got it. So I'm just, just going off track a little bit. So uh, uh, between me and my, my daughters, that's what we talk about. We said, you know, we build personal connection with people and uh, exactly. You're good at it. <laughs> so you, did you like the email? I, we sent you? Yeah. Well, I liked the email, but I liked you and I remembered you and I met you and I was like, okay, this guy's legit. He's somebody I, I actually want to know. I could feel your heart. I could feel that you cared. I could feel that you were intelligent. I could feel you were doing good things, you know? And all of those things are actually what's important to me, right? So when I got the email, it was also like, oh, he's doing this cool stuff with his family. Like, I want to be a part of that. That's, that's different to me, for one. Like, I'm invited to speak on a lot of different marketing summits, but that was a differentiator also. Like, this is something that is going to be special for families, and that speaks to my values. Thank so you. that was something else. Thank you so much. That's what I keep, I keep telling. So Raya comes with me for uh, social media mastery world. And, you know, we go for most of the summits, the mom doesn't like it, but we take away from uh, school, but mm -hmm. we go to school. I said, that is school as well. So uh, Raya and Aviana, they wrote their first, uh, I have it somewhere here. Yeah. A couple of years back, from, uh, all three of us, we wrote a book, bedtime stories for tomorrow's entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And they spoke on stages and all of that. And then we traveled, Raya and I traveled between, uh, so we were, you know, four days in San Diego when everything seemed okay in the world. And uh, so, and she was like, how do you know so many people? I said, Raya, this is my fourth or fifth year of coming here. And you, mm -hmm. come here, you come and meet people just to serve and say hello and see what you can do for them. 
and that's after after a few years it's automatically like in my in the digital agency world which i've been a part of 10 years uh, after that people automatically come to you and say let's sit down and see what we can do together it automatically happens we don't have to rush it so mm-hmm. hopefully Raya will be there with me every year now uh, and I hope the conference ha- happens offline because I'm I, we're missing the uh, offline con- human connection now. It's been India, especially now. I'm in India. It's been the most severe lockdown uh, ever. Uh, yeah. Almost 60 days. We're not allowed to get out of the house. Now it's okay. Last one week, but 60 days complete locked in, uh, lockdown. Not to the grocery store or anything. So grocery store only if it's urgent, and uh, because almost everybody in India has domestic help. So we, you know, domestic help meets the gro- the grocer down the road and they exchange whatever money and, and they get it back. So we didn't see outside the house for 60 days plus. And wow. But, but a good thing happened that in those 60 days, uh, in, I'll tell you about the 40, we did about 45 webinars in the first 30 days of the lockdown and built mm. an email list of 102,000 people. And, All right. Uh, yeah. So... <laughs> And so, so we, we, we worked through it. We worked uh, every single day through it. Anyway, so coming back to that. So thank you for telling us why, why you, I love the way you said design your life, design what your day looks like. There may be resistance from where you are today. And that's fine because, you know, that you're going in a completely opposite direction. So be okay with it. And it's very important because people are saying, see the resistance and I don't think this is for me. I think my body's mm-hmm. revolting. I think my life is revolting. This is not supposed to be. And the end of the online course. So stick exactly. with it that is natural so thank you for pointing that out then you uh, you said uh, actually get to know who this person is what is their problem and when we asked you for a technical uh, uh, sort of a hack if i can call it that you said go to amazon and find out and i love that the one star could be fake the five star could be just the best friends look at the three mm-hmm. stars and those people are saying i love this book but maybe i missed out on a certain uh, this could have been better if i had these two points and uh, so a book relevant to the topic that you may be making a course on, pick that up and find out what it is, put it on a whiteboard and all of that. Work on the research. Like they say, if you uh, sweat more in practice, you bleed less in war. So do do more of that. And then when it came to the marketing part, you said uh, there could be, you know, creating a funnel and all of that, but your strategy of marketing is putting together the right people, and you define the right people, not as the influencer. You said people who think, who you connect with from the heart uh, mm-hmm. and bring them in. And so a collective influence of a lot of people to be able to make noise about a new launch. And it's not, impo- it's not they, need, they may not uh, say yes to sharing your message on their email list. Just them showing up is, is more than enough. So I'm just breaking it down for a lot of people that are listening to this kind of information for the very first time. So sure. uh, thank you for your patience. Yeah. So uh, now this, uh, Raya. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So my uh, next question is, what is one mistake you advise others to um, avoid, which would benefit them uh, when making a course? One mistake to avoid. My major one was don't put everything in it. That's the biggest one, but also concentrate on the course length and keeping it shorter. So some people, when they're creating a course, they think of uh, time as an exchange for value. And we have to flip that conversation. So when a student is giving you their time, it's their gift to you, not your gift to them. The value is the problem that you solve for them. So the focus isn't, I should make a course that's 20 hours long because then therefore I'm giving them more value. The focus is how fast can I solve their problem and move them on? Okay, and so inside of that, you can solve multiple problems and multiple products, multiple courses, multiple coaching programs, multiple masterminds, however you want to do it, one-on-one work, you can solve all of their problems over time, but you want to get them a result. How can you get them there the fastest way possible, not just taking hours of their life? (laughs) Right. So... uh... Getting them from point A to B, like you said, don't focus on the Z. Mm-hmm. B, tra- many, uh, not major transformations, but many progressions. Uh, so that at the end of every module, maybe they feel, uh, oh, I-, I got something which I didn't have before this. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can transform a person in an online course, but that's like a different, it depends if you're going professional or personal development, really, and what you're focused on. You know, you, 
I don't know if you can transform somebody to be the best tomato canner. I mean, they might be the best tomato canner, but I don't know if it'll feel like a transformation or just like, a, yeah, I can finally can these things. <laughs> so when it comes to, when it comes to, um, uh, so I've got a course, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hypothetically speaking for on behalf of the audience. Okay. Now I've got a course. I found the audience and I marketed it and now I've built in a small community. Do you mm -hmm. think having a Facebook group as a support system allows people to buy more of the community and less of the course and that they complement it? And so what would be your thoughts on that? I would definitely encourage people to have a community to support their course if it's something that again fits them, their content and their students. So if it doesn't fit your lifestyle and your lifestyle goals, like if having a community means you have to hire a additional person to run it and that's not on your list right now, or if having a community means you need to show up three times a week inside of the community and that's not on your list right now, then that's not, that's not what you should be focused on. However, um, one of the studies that Thinkific did was looking at accountability and accountability improves uh, course completion rates. I think I, it was like a third of the way improvement or something, but it was enough of a number that I was like, okay, well, this is something. Um, when we're looking at adding accountability, you've got people that are going to finish it more because they have somebody else looking out for them. So a group on Facebook could be that form of accountability if guided in the right direction. Otherwise, it's just a, hey, I can't log in. Where's my password? Um, <laughs> you know, depending. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so again, when, I, when, when we spoke about adding value to the course, you, mm -hmm. your, you, you took us back to saying, go back to the first statement that I made, you're doing it to design your life. So mm -hmm. if you in the process of adding value and giving a Facebook course and saying, let me give it and say 24 hour access and you can, if that does not fit into the initial design on why you wanted an online course to buy the freedom that you wanted in the first place, don't do it because it's not yeah. going to keep you. And, and I'm saying all of these things from a perspective of your basic needs are taken care of. Sure. Right. So let's just add some, some realness here. Like if you have a roof over your head and food in your stomach and you're good and your family has that and they're good. Well, a, we know you're better than a lot of people, right? So exactly. be grateful for that part, but, and you're okay financially enough to experiment with these things, then set it up that way. But if you are at a place where your back's up against the wall, you may have to, you know, take client work at first where you may not actually want that when you look at your daily life, like this is the goal, this is the vision, this is where I'm heading. And until I get everything aligned right here, I might be doing other things that I don't wanna do, but I know that eventually this is gonna line up. The problem is that most people don't create that to begin with. If you ask people what their goals are, they might like, you know, I'd like to buy this car someday, you know, but like it's not necessarily clear for them or clear on what that picture looks like for them. And so they won't get there. <laughs> you know, like if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to get there. So that is so powerful. And I've reiterated it because uh, we often, more than often, redesign multiple lives and land back in the same place that we were, end up in the same place with the same routines, the same madness, and saying that, you know, life is not working for me because we are not being true to the vision that we set out for ourselves. So that was very, very important. If you're choosing freedom and you're using this to choose freedom, then make sure that everything that you do and everything that you promise to the outside world, because the outside world with a course and a community will come, will want to come into your life as fast as possible, as much as possible. And you need to set some boundaries there as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, especially right now, everyone's hopping online right now. So yeah. it's just, I, I can't remember the exact stat. I think I got from Greg Smith from Thinkific. I want to say it was close to like a 400% new enrollments or something. It's yeah, just something like that. Yeah. wild. So yeah, <laughs> now's yeah. a good time to build a course, guys. <laughs> now's a good time to build a course, guys. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, my last question is, how do you know which type of course to create? Like, personally, I have dealt with bullying and um, would, you, would you start the course while you're going through, you know, getting through that struggle or once you've already 
you've gone through it, now you know about it, what, which one is best? And how do you know which type of course to do? Okay. So a lot of this goes back to that market research question or the market research uh, process that we talked about earlier. But let's just talk about your bullying course right here right now. If you are, if you are being bullied, that is coming from an outside source, which you are not responsible for. What you are responsible for is how you are handling you while this is going on. So if you have found a way that is super powerful for other children to handle themselves, um, or teenagers, sorry, to handle themselves so that they are not impacted and you feel really strongly about this, then I would say it's your duty to share it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I believe that we're given gifts and this is just my faith, but I believe that we are given gifts. And as we are given these gifts and as we overcome struggles, then it's our responsibility to reach a hand out to somebody else who is in the same situation and pull them along. So if you feel really strongly that what you have is your process for dealing with this situation and you have been able to overcome it where others are not overcoming it, you know, other people are suffering right now with what you're talking about. They are in pain. And so when you think about it that way, like if you see that another person is in pain, shouldn't you reach your hand out? Right. You know? So, I mean, it's, it's up to you on timing, but as far as I'm concerned, like if you were saying to me, you know, I'm going to teach people how to build a billion dollar business, but I've never done it before, or I'm only in stage one. I'd say, yeah, wait a minute. Um, just hold off until you get to the actual goal and you've been there for years and then go back and teach them because that's a different kind of goal. But if you're saying like, hey, look, I, I'm with you and I've been with you and I'm going through this right now, but because of X, Y, and Z, this process that I created for myself, I show up still as my best self. I hold myself together. I hold myself accountable for my actions. I still am able to smile through my day, no matter what picture they send me, picture they post, Snapchat I get, because I know like kids today, are, they can get you through any kind of means, right. you know, any kind. And it's been really hard for your generation to really deal with this. So if you've got that process, and sweetie, I'm sorry that you've gone through this. Let me say that also, because it is way different than my generation. But if you've got that process down, share it. Definitely share it. 